Hello, I'm Jonas from VHDLWiz. Welcome to the course that helps you get Linux running on your FPGA designs. Go to Customize Hardware, we're going to make some changes. First of all, the memory, I recommend giving it more memory if you have access to it. Connect things that it already knows how to connect on the board. For example, the DDR RAM signals. After we run this, you will see that it has connected to the board DDR signals. And these are the signals that came from the board support package. There are other things here. You can see all of the peripherals. Type sudo systemctl status. This is the command to check if a daemon or server is running in Ubuntu. And the name is tftp. I'm going to use tab to complete. Connecting to hardware server because we have the Silenx driver. Now it is configuring the FPGA, the system, the bit file. It configures the FPGA, loads the first stage bootloader, the device tree, and then it's downloading the bootloader U-boot. In here, I want to first go to user packages, and there are the apps that we just created. Do you see? Do you recognize them? VHDL with C app and VHDL with install app. Those we created with Petalinux Create. They are here and they're enabled. Waiting for interrupt, interrupt detected, value zero. And now if I flip the switch, value one, value zero, value one, value zero. So we have to control one of them with one of these unsigned signals coming out of this module. So these are currently unconnected, and so are these. We have to connect the outputs to these registers that are readable and writable from Linux. And we can do that at the bottom here, where it says add user logic. By running the remote GDB debugger in VS Code, you can easily step through your C code, stop at any point and view the value of any variable and even the CPU registers.